Welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, global markets reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at market site is Frank Selly. He's the CEO of NASDAQ listed BioHigh Tech Global. We're going to focus on technology driven solutions for the trash problem in the U.S. And this is a topic everyone should care about. Frank, thank you very much for joining us at market site. Thanks now, for having us. In a minute or less, and I know we could go on all day about this, how big is the trash problem in the U.S. and what factors are contributing to it? Uh, and the problem's massive. Like you said, we could talk about this for four hours. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is uh, in the United States, population continues to grow. Uh, we tend to be a relatively wasteful society, uh, particularly with a lot of e-commerce going on now. So a lot of residential trash is being created that years ago wasn't. Uh, and we rely on finite resources uh, in the United States for the disposal of our trash. So landfills, big holes in the ground. Um, that have are not infinite. Uh, so as population grows and we continue to create more waste, sooner or later we're going to run out of space. Uh, there's of course the social element of that as well. Is is it a great idea to dig a hole in the ground and uh, and bury our trash? So you know it's a big problem uh, and it's getting worse. Uh, more recently in the news is another problem that continues to grow regarding waste, which is an ongoing uh, challenge regarding recycling in the United States. So, you know, arguably maybe a bigger problem right now because uh, with solid waste, we do have some time on our hands, but with recycling, uh, we've put a lot of uh, eggs in one basket, relying on international buyers for our recyclable products. And, you know, anywhere you look in the news today, uh, municipalities are struggling uh, with recycling at this point in time. So, you know, no longer can you get rid of recycling at no cost. Uh, you know, the concept of recycled park benches is sort of becoming a fallacy. Mm -hmm. uh, and recycling costs are now growing to be almost as high as what uh, waste disposal costs are. So it's, not about, it's a complex problem. Uh, it's not just about the trash. It's now about the recycling, and it doesn't seem to be going away soon. You know, this is a long-term issue that we, we need to solve. Well, tell us about BioHigh Tech and the solutions that the, your, your company is working on to provide for a more sustainable planet. Yeah, I mean, we're a technology provider. Um, you know, one of the, one of the uh, factors contributing to the challenges we do have in the United States is that the industry in general has been really slow uh, to adopt and develop emerging technologies to deal with waste disposal. So uh, whereas in Europe and Asia, they've been a little bit, you know, a little bit more advanced than what we have, um, you know, probably because of population density issues. They didn't have the, the open land that we have. So we focus at BioHighTech on developing and deploying cost-effective technology-based solutions for not only waste disposal, but you know, to try to solve part of the problem, which is how much waste do we generate? So measuring this amount of waste at the point of generation and providing our customers with a tool that may make them just a little bit smarter and more efficient. So in other words, if we can reduce what's generated, then the problem becomes exponentially smaller. From there, we can figure out, hey, what's a better way to deal with it? So we do a little bit of both. Um, we collect a lot of real-time data that's not available historically. Uh, and we also deploy cost-effective technology-based disposal solutions that have been proven you know, here in the US and throughout the world, you know, hopefully to take a little bit of a bite out of the problem, right? All so. Right. So, so what kind of customers does bio, bio high tech have? And let's use food waste as an example. Sure. Should, what would a cost savings analysis look like there? Yeah, so our customers are, are typically large generators of food waste, uh, universities, uh, hospitals, grocery stores, you know, large uh, retail restaurant, uh, hospitality, the usual suspects, right. right? Anywhere they're feeding a whole lot of people or uh, they're providing food for a whole lot of people, they're, they're a potential customer of ours. Uh, you know the names of mm -hmm. pretty much every customer we have. Um, you know, regarding food waste, you know, that's one where we, we use our on-site digestion technology to deal with the waste at the point of generation, uh, and we measure it there. And if deployed correctly and monitored and used correctly, you know, depending on where you are in the United States, you might be able to see savings of 30 to 40 percent uh, by utilizing a technology-based fixed-cost product as opposed to sort of a very labor-intensive, logistical, heavy, traditional waste uh, collection and disposal method. It's really interesting that you mentioned data analytics are one of the tools that you provide because the average person, even myself, until I did the research for this interview, you don't associate data analytical tools yeah. with garbage. You just think of the physical process. Can you elaborate on, on how that works? 
most people don't think of it that right. way, right? Is, um, but you know, think of waste as a commodity, right? Think of waste as a byproduct of inefficient behavior. So to give you a real example, you know, if you happen to look in your trash bin at home uh, and you look in there every week and you pull out everything that's out and you realize that you throw away 12, uh, 12 containers of yogurt, strawberry yogurt, every week, week after week, well, that tells you something, right? Uh, if you were measuring that in real time and you knew, hey, every Monday when you went to the grocery store, oh, I remember, I throw away 12 containers of strawberry yogurt every week, maybe you don't buy 12, maybe you buy two, right? Uh, if you cannot buy that 10, you've become more efficient in your home. Mm -hmm. So the same goes for businesses, right? Think of waste as a byproduct of inefficient behavior on the front of a business's operations, whether it's in food prep or whatnot. So measurement is important, mm -hmm. right? Uh, waste is a big deal and it shows, I think, not only, hey, what are the environmental impacts and what are the costs associated with disposal of waste, but where do I have inefficiencies within my organization that perhaps I can improve on if I'm paying attention to what goes out the back door? Waste is typically not sexy. Right. People don't want to think about it. They want to put it away and make it go away. And when you get home at night, you hope it's gone. But the fact of the matter is if we measure that waste and we become more efficient, we help to contribute towards solving the bigger problem, right, right which is generate less. It, it just seems like a no-brainer as a business. It's, it's an obvious way to reduce costs, be more efficient, do the right thing environmentally. Do you think zero waste is possible? I, I think there's a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think measurement and management is key. Um, I think if we are going to get close to zero waste, uh, particularly in the United States, we have to be more conscious about what we generate. So we do have to start by solving the problem at the very beginning, right? right? Is let's try to be a little bit more conscious about, hey, what are we shipping? What are we buying, right? How much are we buying and whatnot? And that'll generally, I think, help, right? So measurement and management is key. Uh, and I think we have to be open-minded, right? We have to adopt technologies like ours at BioHighTech, uh, like our, our Insorga technology, which will open uh, this fall in West Virginia, where we'll convert municipal waste into a reusable fuel, EPA-approved reusable fuel. Uh, I think if we start to open our minds a little bit in the U.S., and we start to be a, li a little bit more conscious about, hey, what are we doing, right? Are we treating our world responsibly, our Earth responsibly? Uh, and we're a little more open-minded to trying some new technologies. We do have to make sure that those technologies are still cost-effective. That's important. So it's one thing we focus on is, you know, we do focus on making sure that our technologies can be deployed at equal to or less cost than what a business uh, has now. I think over time, if we pay attention and we're open-minded, we can get closer, right, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. But there's a lot of work we have to do here in the United States, for sure, to get there. All right. Well, thank you very much, Frank, for joining us at Market Site. And thank you for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.